You say it can attach notes to files. That's right. Now press enter. I hope you're taking all this in, William. Sorry I can't stay. Daughter's birthday. You know what they're like at 14. Oh, let's see. Uh, six week follow up. That's the sort of thing. I'm off to the exhibition if anybody's looking for me. Sure you don't want to come? No, no, no. I'm being instructed in the new program. I'm too busy. You'd never think I was the one who suggested it, would you? <laughs> Ciao. Bye. Yeah, that's it. I'm off too. No, I'm going out with that stuff. So, after dinner for a look at the CD ROM, if you're sure it's convenient. William. This is Jack she introduced me to. He's Madge Murphy's boy. He's years older than she. Three years, he's 17. I don't want to go out with boys. Well, you stay home for a change. You try and stop her. You having a good time? Did you see the clothes Mum gave me? Oh, why? I gave her $100 and told her to get what she liked. She looks like a tart. I don't think your dad likes me very much. He doesn't like anyone. <laughs> Thinks I'm gonna corrupt his birthday girl. <laughs> I gotta go, okay? See ya. I was not carrying on! Don't lie to me, I saw you with him. So I kissed him, so what? You're only 14! Big deal, I'm not a nap, he's all right! Cass! What do you expect? You spoil the rotten and then you put your foot down. We shouldn't slam the door. Oh, sorry about the mess. I only had this lot delivered yesterday. I haven't had a chance to sort it out yet. OK, if this goes in here. Yeah. We've got the sex rolls well and truly worked out here. I buy the power tools and Didi uses them. Don't you believe a word he says. You should see him with a belt sander. The prospect of renovating terrifies me. Through here. Yeah. We enjoy it in a warped sort of way. We're always buying and selling. Come through. Thank you. You're escaping from the chaos, darling. <laughs> this is Dr. Sharp. Hello. My daughter, Cassandra. Take a seat. Yes, thank you. It's amazing technology, this. 600 megabytes on one CD. A couple of years ago, you'd have been paying in the hundreds. I still find all this mouse business extremely disconcerting. Well, it's just a matter of... Yeah, I know. I just practice. <laughs> Could we run this on our machine, do you think? I think you'd have to upgrade. The animation's a bit jerky if you haven't got a 486 and that monitor of yours would let you down. Yeah. Oh, must be in the car, the other program. Barium X-ray of the stomach. Yeah. It's on genetic testing. I thought it looked quite good. Yeah. It's Ted. He's just gone out to the car. He'll be back in a minute. Oh, yes, right. Thank you. <laughs> Last thing. You're jammed if you keep on doing that. Hmm? Doesn't like being told to do too many things at once. <laughs> well, I can relate to that. <coughs> that Pebble Beach you're playing? You know it? Well, uh, only the computer version. I've never played the real thing. I've never touched a real golf club. Uh -huh. Do you want a game? Um, yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm a surgeon, uh, but I work in a general mm. practice. You can be Nick Price. I'm always Craig Parry. Oh, I'm honoured. You go first. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't check the prevailing wind. Yeah, so it seems. Is it true you can go to the doctor by yourself when you're 14? I've hooked it too. Yes. Do you have girls that come to you? Without their parents knowing, you mean? Yeah. Sometimes. You'll go. Yes. And it's all confidential, right? 
Oh, yes, it doesn't matter what the patient's age is. I mean, you still have to respect their confidentiality. Part of what being a doctor's all about. However, in the case of a 14-year-old girl, I'd be much happier if she spoke to her parents about it first. And, well, I'd do my best to encourage her to do so. But what if she couldn't talk to them? No, just, just having a social game with Craig Parry here. Hmm. <laughs> Landed in the bunker. Yeah, it sounds like me. The Yanks developed this as a guide to health care professionals. Yeah? It's like he wants me to stay a baby forever. Did he say he didn't want you to see me? What if he did? I don't care. I think I need to give the ring a miss tonight. Wanna come home? Hey, Jacko! Where's Longford? Oi, Finny! I've got the place to myself. Oh, go on. It'll be just the two of us. Just you and me, it'll be great. Okay. Cool. Well, I'll see you tonight. You'd have been fascinated, Tessa. You should have come with me. I don't remember being asked, William. Really? I'm sure I did ask you. Well, you're wrong. What I remember you saying is, I'm going to take Coffles, if anyone's interested. Well, there you are, then. Here I am what? Well, if you were interested, you should have said so. That's not what you meant. How do you know? Because of your tone. It wasn't an invitation, it was a directive. I've worked for you for ten years, William. I know the difference. It's all in the eyebrows, you know. If only one moves, you're in trouble. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Good. That you chose to misunderstand me. Now, do you want to hear about this new software or not? Oh, that'd be great. Well, it's a marvellous tool to use with patients. You could build up a stockpile of standard procedures. The barium meal sequence is really quite outstanding. What are we supposed to do, William? Drag the poor patient out to the desk and say, excuse me, Julie, can we use your computer so we can show Mr. Smith his small bowel? <laughs> It'll be in my office. Granted, you know. You reckon? Yep. I mean, have you noticed that when William walks into a room, everyone has to stop talking just to listen to what he has to say? No. Yep. And now he's discovered computers. Wizzo. Let's be really having five minutes of a dinosaur age in virtual reality before you know it. I think it's admirable. Flexibility in a man of his age. Ah, can I help you? Mrs. Kandinsky? I want to see Dr. Sharp. Do you have an appointment? Uh, that's all right, Julie. I'm sure we can manage to put cars in through here. Year nine, eh? Hmm. What's that in the old system? Third form, is it? All right, then. What appears to be the problem? I want to go on the pill. Yeah. And your parents don't know that you are here. No. Kaz, your parents seem like nice enough people to me. Don't you think that perhaps if you approach them in the right way that they might... No way. Have you had much uh, sexual experience? You mean, have I done it? Yeah. Not yet. But, but I want to. Right. And you think that you should be taking precautions? Hmm. Very sensible of you. Uh, there are other considerations to be taken into account as well, of course, um, above and beyond the risk of pregnancy. You mean AIDS? Well, among other things, yeah. uh, Have you known him long, this boy that you're 
contemplating having relations with? A while, I guess. Kaz, 14 is terribly young. Don't you think perhaps you could wait for a little while longer? Does that mean you won't give it to me? No, no. No, I didn't say that. Right, Jeff. Take your blazer off, please. I need to take your blood pressure. Well, he's, uh, he's nice, is he? This boy. We go skating. Yeah. And, uh, how old is he? Around my age. A bit older. Not much. That seems quite normal. Now then, I need to ask you a few questions about your menstrual history, just so that we can work out the right sort of pill to put you on. Uh, how long is it since your last period? When did you last menstruate, Kath? I haven't started yet. Does it matter? Ah, <clears throat> well, I think we might be jumping the gun a bit here. Why? Well, um, a, a woman isn't fertile until she started ovulating. I, I've got some booklets here, Kaz, that I think it might be worthwhile your reading. Julie, I've told Kaz you'll make sure she was bulk billed. Hmm? Oh, right, okay. Mr. Danko here, yeah? Uh, no, he rang to say he couldn't make it. I've made his appointment for tomorrow. All right. Okay, you give Julie all your details and she'll look up. Uh, sorry, Kaz, just bear with me for a moment. Will you until I find my way around all this? Um, now, okay. Uh, what's your address? But I thought. That's all right, darling. It's only for your card. Oh. Eight. West Highbury. So she's only 14. I don't know, I'm probably getting past it, but they're all so sexually sophisticated nowadays. What are you doing? Nothing. I don't know whether sophisticated is the right word if she thinks she needs the pill and she hasn't even started menstruating. Mm. No, we have coffee. The sun is well past the yard arm, William. Yeah, yeah they're probably quite right. You're so much better at this sort of thing than I am. Oh, just a small one for me. I have to do the books tonight. Thing is, I'm just not equipped to deal with teenage girls, Tessa. Never have been. You think it needs a woman's touch, do you? Yeah. Well, I'll take her over if you like. I'm sure it would be much better for Kaz. You're a fine one to talk about wasting money. That is not the point, and you know it. It wasn't even that expensive. Oh, will you just listen for a change? Can't you see what you're doing with her? It's pathetic. You can't buy her love. I don't need to buy her love. It's just a present. Because you had a fight. Wouldn't occur to you to sit down and talk to her, would it? Discuss it. We talk. No, you yell and she sulks until you buy her back again. You know, you sound jealous. Oh, don't be stupid. Who'd be jealous over you? your present. Thanks, Dad. I love it. Mm. What's that? She's 
probably just curious. This is not curiosity, this is sick. Did you ask her where she got it? Oh, I know where she got it. That shit pot boy, she was all over like a rat. You don't know that. I know what I know. Oh, how? Tell me how. You spend any time with her lately, have you? Just nod once for yes. At least I'll think we're having a conversation. I'm sick to death of it, Ted. I'm sick of it. We're not a family. Families talk. You pay the bills, you think it's the end of your responsibilities. Well, it's, it's not. I'm not the one who lets her go around dressing like a tart. If you paid more than five minutes' attention, you'd see that all her friends dress the same way. She's not like other girls. Why isn't she? You know why. Crosstalk. They're great. Yeah, I reckon they've gone off a bit though. I haven't heard this one yet. They used to be great, but. <laughs> You're shivering. I should have brought a coat. I thought maybe you'd. You know, you'd, you'd changed your mind. Do you want me to put on the heater? Yeah. Hang on a minute. Guy who plays leads is backing on TTM. My brother plays guitar. Yeah? He's at uni. Do you want a, a, a drink or something? There's a beer or, or a whiskey, you know? No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> William, got the munchies? Uh, no, 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 not really. Listen, I might have the wrong end of the stick here, but... Oh, yes? I feel like I'm picking up some sort of a... Some sort of what? Some sort of vibe. Vibe? Mm-hmm. Oh, do you? I thought we ought to clear the air. I think I know what's wrong. Oh, right. Well, it's nothing very huge. I'm it's sorry, I should have checked with you before. No, no, no. I've got no problem with your personal life. It's just I that... promise, if I have to go to an exhibition or something like that again, I'll talk it through with you first. Ah, yeah. And I'm more than happy to work a couple of extra hours this week to make up the time. No, no, that's not necessary. Isn't it? And no, no. You're more than pulling your weight in the practice. Oh, great. Everything's cool, then? Yes, everything's uh, cool. Right. Well, I'm off to bed then. Good night. Night, night. You want me to walk you home? I'll be fine. You still want to see me, don't you? Sure. Come on. I'll see you to the door. Why 
What's wrong, Han? Is it your dad finding that magazine? Nothing's wrong. He was very upset. He thought maybe Jack might have. He's so something. stupid. And I wouldn't debate that, but... Well, Cass, hang on a minute. <laughs> Jack! Quick, man, let's go. Jack! Problem is, there's so much more pressure on teenagers nowadays. Advertising and television pulling them one way and the fear of disease and the rest of it pulling them another. Tell me about it. I marvel at how our kids have managed to turn out so sane. Oh, you're not out of the woods yet, Tessa. Ah, oh, but I can see the end of the track. It's all so much more simple when I was growing up. Well, you too, for that matter. <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt about that. I suppose that's why we're so much better adjusted as adults, hmm? Are we? Well, I can only speak for myself, of course. Right. Yes, well, you're a real man of the 90s. You're being sarcastic. Not at all. Wow, I think he's fantastic. Any chance of getting me one? <laughs> Sorry, limited edition. There are others to choose from. Well, between you and me, I wouldn't mind saying a bit more of him. I think you should turn him around. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. File size is dependent on the variable data input. Dr. Sharp. Huh. Can I see you? Well, as a matter of fact, I thought you might prefer to see Dr. Korkidis. She's a woman and... Uh... Yeah, yeah, of course you can. There you go. And I gather it wasn't such a pleasant experience. I don't know what happened. He was on top of me and then... Well, it was... Probably his first time, too, and he didn't quite know what to do. There's nothing wrong with me. No, no, there's nothing wrong with you, Cass. You're a perfectly normal girl. I saw a picture of this lady. I don't look like her. I know Cass, I don't. Cass, 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 don't you think you're getting just a little bit carried away? I just thought that maybe that's why Dr. Kemley was in my vagina all the time. Right, well, you just sit there for a minute and I'll be right back. And please, cheer up. I hate to see such a pretty face looking so miserable. Hmm? Did she say who this Dr. Kemeny was? No. But I know the family's just moved here from Canberra, so she must have been seeing him there. Do you think he was interfering with her? No. It was just a suggestion. Oh, she's just very distressed, that's all. She needs reassuring. Now, I'm going to examine her, so I thought that perhaps if you were there with me instead of Julie, we might be able to broach the subject of your taking her over. Hmm? Just come out when you're dressed. If she doesn't want me to take over, William, then she doesn't want me to take over. You'll have to continue. Yeah. So you don't think there's anything wrong with me, then? <laughs> well, I think what we've got here is a situation where the two people are too young for sexual intercourse. Now, if I were you, Cass, I'd give myself oh, another couple of years. You've still got a lot of growing up to do. It's just your mind racing ahead of your body. Wouldn't you say so, Tessa? I think that just about sums everything up. <laughs> oh, uh, who's this Dr. Kemeny that you mentioned? He's my endocrinologist. Aha, uh -huh. yes, I think I've heard of him. He's in Canberra, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. You weren't exactly honest with her. Oh, of course I wasn't. Well, I wasn't going to scare the living daylights out of the poor girl. Have you heard of this Dr. Kemeny? Uh, sorry, William, uh, have you got a moment? Well, I suppose he's in the directory. Oh. Hmm? I don't know what's happening. You're supposed to be able to attach notes to files, you know, like little stick-ons like Ted showed you, but all mine are disappearing.
She has adrenal hyperplasia. Body's producing too much androgen. Apparently it was one of those cases where she was sexually indeterminate at birth. But she's genetically female. Oh, yes, yes. They had to operate at four weeks to reduce the size of the clitoris and open up the labia. Now I gather she's on cortisone three times a day to control things. Why didn't she say anything? Apparently they haven't told her. According to Dr. Kemeny, the parents specifically asked that she should not be told. And he agreed? He's their daughter. Yeah, but this is not some ownership dispute, William. You saw the size of her vagina. What happens the next time she tries to have intercourse? Are you suggesting I tell a 14-year-old child that she has to have her vagina enlarged? Well, someone's going to have to one day. Those parents need their heads red. How could they not have told her? Anyway, I'm sorry, it's your problem. Quite. If I knew her better, it would be easier. At least I'd have some idea what to expect. In the way of a reaction? Yeah. Well, quite frankly, William, I don't think it makes any difference how well you know her. Come in. Ah, oh, William, Mrs. Coffle's here. Kaz's mother. What? Well, I sent the bill to her home address by mistake. Sorry. Yes, I know what you're going to say, Mrs. Coffle. She's only 14. She's still a child. But that doesn't mean that I shouldn't respect her confidentiality. I'm the child's mother. You have no right well, to keep... Perhaps she feels it's easier to talk about certain things to someone who isn't a member of the family. What sort of things? Children grow up so quickly these days, Mrs. Coffle, as I'm sure you are aware. Too quickly, perhaps, in my view, but that is the world they live in. They see their friends doing certain things and they want to do the same. Well, what are you talking about? You're talking about drugs? No, not drugs. Sex? I think you should speak to your daughter. You're talking about sex? She can't be pregnant. No, she's not pregnant. Mrs. Coffle, I'm sure you feel you're doing the right thing by trying to protect Kaz, but you could be doing her a disservice. It is absolutely intolerable that we should break a patient's confidence. I can't be expected to work without proper training. And if you hadn't kept Ted Coffle to yourself all afternoon, I would have learned how to use the program like I was supposed to. Look, it was an accident, William, all right? I wrote it on a note and I tagged it to the file. At the time I realised it wasn't working, I'd already sent out the bills. Yes, well, all right. We'll try and pretend the whole thing never happened, shall we? I think you handled that very well. Thanks. Let's hope it's the only one I screwed up. He had no right to tell you. He didn't tell me anything. All I know is that you went to see him. He said you wouldn't find out. I'm your mother, Kaz. I worry about you. I can't help it. You're my little girl. I'm not little! Stop telling me I'm little all the time. And start behaving like an adult. Talk to me. You'll think I'm stupid. Oh, I won't think you're stupid, honey. I just hate to see you so upset like this. It makes me feel so useless. It was awful, Mum. It was so bad. It was really bad. It was all my fault. I didn't know what I was going to do. What was bad, honey? Me and Jack last night. It hurt, Mum. I know he didn't mean to. It hurt so much, I just couldn't do it. I had no idea. It must have been horrible for her. The first time. She's so young. Was it Jack? 
Yeah. I'll wring his bloody neck. Well, that'll help. Where did it happen? Well, his place, I suppose. Ted. Ted, she's got to be told. Doesn't she? You know whose fault this is, don't you? It's not hers and it's not his. It's ours. Did you hit him? No. That's something. We've got to sort this out, Ted. All of us. I felt like an idiot. I wondered what the hell I was doing there. So will Kaz. The outraged father's the last thing she needed. Leave off, Daddy. I know that. Well, if you know it, why did you go? I was angry. Oh, terrific, Ted. Join the queue. What's that supposed to mean? It's all you. You feel hard done by. You feel that Kaz's condition's your fault. What? So bloody selfish. You're not the only one in this equation. Why would I think it's my fault? Because I feel the same. Isn't that why we never talk about it? <sighs> That's stupid. Isn't that why we cried ourselves to sleep for a week after she was born? Oh, stop it. Isn't it why you give her anything she wants? To keep the demons off your back? Shut up, Daddy. That's why we never had any more kids too, isn't it? No discussion, just a decision that we never even talked about. Oh, if that's what you want to think. <sighs> I've got to go to Melbourne tomorrow. There's a company having problems with the network I installed. William, have you seen this photograph? Yes. It's interesting, don't you think? It's vaguely, tonally reminiscent of that Max Dupain image of the 40s and 50s. The, the, the body surfer, wasn't it? The subject was an itinerant palm, not an Australian at all. Did you, did you know that? William? What did you tell him, huh? Tell her? Tell your father. I didn't tell him anything. It wasn't my fault you couldn't do it. And don't you go telling anyone it was. There's nothing wrong with me. You're the one who's the freak. You and that psycho dad of yours. Straightforward, Mr. Tilson. Tony Lee's. What did you tell my parents? I'm sorry, Cass. You can't come. You told me there was nothing wrong with me. Sorry, William. She was too fast for me. The patient. You told them I was a freak. That's why Dad went to see Jack. You lied to me. Hey, come on. Back up, Cass. Come on. To apologise, Mr. Tilson. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So, how was she? Well, you saw how she was. Terrible. But did you manage to calm her down at all before she left? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Ah, oh, good. Thank you. Very difficult time for her. I know. Oh, yeah. So what's that tone of yours all about? Kaz told me what's going on with him and what you said to her. Or rather, what you haven't said to her. I see. Well, whatever it is about, Julie, I think you'd better get it off your chest. OK. You let a 14-year-old girl leave here knowing she was about to have sex with a man and you didn't bother to stop her. I think that's appalling on your part. A man? That's carnal knowledge, William. She told me the boy was about her age. He's nearly 18. 
Well, if I'd known that, I would have pointed it out, but I can't help the fact that she lied to me. Oh, don't split here. She hasn't even begun menstruating. Excuse me, but I did say to her... You didn't even tell her it could be painful. I told her I thought she wasn't ready. Well, what's that to a 14-year-old? It's like a bloody red rag to a ball. In which case, if she'd already made up her mind to follow this course of action, wouldn't have mattered what I said, would it? That's crap. If you'd said it strongly enough, she wouldn't have done it. Julie, I am her doctor. It is neither my place nor my right to tell her what to do. She and her parents are responsible for any moral choices in all this, not me. But you knew she couldn't talk to her parents. Well, that's not my fault. Oh, thank you, Pontius Pilate. All oh, right, right. Hang on. So, next time some woman who cannot cope with the children she already has tells me that she is pregnant, I should tell her to terminate the pregnancy, should I? Don't twist things. Well, that would be my opinion. Look, you can try and snail out of it as much as you like, William, but the fact is, this time, you screwed up. about computers? Oh, very little. Well, not much, really. A, a minuscule amount. I want you to do me a favour. Ah. Well, what are you standing over there for? Come here. <coughs> I want you to run this program and tell me if the screen comes up not reading message, execute file. And then that way I'll know whether it's my fault or whether it's actually... Why are you looking so scared? Uh, am I? Yeah, it's very simple. Well, the truth is... When you're feeling the pressure of your job, which I might add you do very well, uh, and you're angry, you scare me. I do. Don't be so stupid. Well, uh, only a little bit. I mean, you do have a very, um, what's the word, commanding way about you, which is not a bad thing, but sometimes I find it, and, and sometimes others find it, intimidating. Why would you find me intimidating? Well, it's not just me, you know. I mean... Uh, Judy, I... I'll be out for about half an hour. Well, Mrs Page is going to be here soon. Where are you going? I'm visiting the Coffles. All right? If you go to Melbourne, you needn't come back. Did you hear what I said? I heard you. And it's OK, is it? You're just going to walk out on this marriage. You don't want to express an opinion about that. You're the one issuing ultimatums. Well, what else have I got left, Ted? Oh, go. Go to Melbourne. I don't care anymore. We started lying when she was born and we've been lying ever since. About everything. Running away, literally. Well, you're the one who keeps wanting to move on and renovate. I said we. I'm as much a part of this as you, I know. And I can't do it anymore, Ted. I can't. She's got to be told. Dr Sharp. Hello, Mrs Coffell. I hope this isn't an inconvenient time. No, no, come in. Kaz isn't here. Well, I was rather hoping she wouldn't be. As a matter of fact, it's you I want to talk to, and your husband, well, if he's wrong? about. I had a visit from Kaz. She's very distressed. Yes, she is upset. For a very good reason, so it seems. Dr. Sharp was just saying that Kaz... I heard. What can we do for you? Nothing for me. There is perhaps something you could do for your daughter. Well, thank you. I didn't know what she was when she was born, boy or a girl. It was two weeks before they worked it out. They had to do tests. Must have been very traumatic for you. For both of you. Ted? Why don't you come and sit down, Ted? Knowing the sex of your baby, well, <laughs> something everybody takes for granted. Would have been devastating. 
something we've never really been able to forget. It's always been at the back of our minds. For me, anyway. For me, too. You didn't see a room. Before she trashed it, that is. Ted's always made sure it was as girly as he could. Frills and everything. As if they could change anything. I didn't know, did I? Like, if she stopped taking her tablets. The real risk would have been to her ability to metabolise salt. Could be fatal. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Look, this isn't my head speaking, OK? Uh, Dr Kemeny began treating her when she was two, is that right? When we moved to Canberra, we were in Queensland. The first doctor, well, he said we should keep it a secret. I didn't even tell my mother. And Dr Kemeny, was he of the same opinion? He said it was up to us what we told people. What about what you told Kaz? He said it wasn't an issue unless you were contemplating marriage. She's so pretty. If you didn't know... Didn't know what? I thought if I believed strongly enough, she'd be normal. She is normal? She isn't, Daddy. Your daughter is a perfectly normal woman, do you understand? She's absolutely normal. Can I make it any plainer? The only thing wrong with her can be remedied by a simple operation. And quite frankly, I find it absolutely appalling that she still hasn't been told her. She, she's not a child anymore. She has a right to know what's going on with her body. We should have told her years ago. And why didn't you? I wouldn't let her. to talk to you, Kaz. Oh, I thought you said it was just a hormone imbalance. Well, it's a bit more than that, Kaz. Uh, it's your... The problem is, your brain was getting the wrong signals when you were born. Before you were born, I mean. When I was pregnant? Yeah. It wasn't telling you, your body to make any cortisol. So you're supposed to make cortisol. It's... Oh, it's a hormone, like a chemical. Anyway, that meant that you were making too much male hormone. And that's why you have to have the cortisone every day to make sure that your brain's getting the right signals. Do you understand? And what did all the male hormones do to me? Oh, that's hard to explain. You had to have an operation, huh? You had a, a, a very big clitoris. Is that why Dr. Kemeny used to look at me all the time? He was worried about the size of your vagina. In cases like yours, it's sometimes a bit small. And that was what the problem was with Jack. Well, that and the fact that you're too young to be having sex anyway. Well, can they make it bigger? <laughs> of course they can. There's nothing wrong with your case. There's nothing to stop you marrying and having children, if that's what you want to do. I'm just sorry you had to find out that way, by being with Jack. I hate him. Well, some boys are just... Well, they're just... Duds. <laughs> Not all of them. I thought you were going to tell me I was a freak. <laughs> Dad. I'm sorry, Dad. Oh, me too, Tom. More problems this morning? Sorry? With that girl. She made a bit of a fuss in reception. Oh, yeah. Maybe you should have a word to her parents. I did. Well, what do you know about the case? Tassa been talking to you? No. Sometimes you just pick up on things without being told, you know? 
<laughs> so how'd it go with the parents? Sorted out? I think so. Good. You were the sort of go-between, were you? It's something like that. I suppose some people repress their feelings, don't they? Hmm? Makes it hard for them to tackle things head on. Yeah, I suppose. Well, I'll hang this up while there's some sun. to use our computer? I've already told you, Tessa. Ours is only a 286. A bit like comparing a four-cylinder to a V8. What's going on? Oh, William's borrowed a CD-ROM from Ted Cockrell. Yes, I wanted to show Tessa the uh, Mayo Clinic program. <laughs> What's wrong with the damn thing? It helps if you switch it on, William. <laughs> Yeah, well, all you have to do is see... It's all right, William. I'm sure we can work it out for ourselves. Mm hmm Given a chance, despite all our X chromosomes. No, no, I wouldn't bother if I were you. These two have transformed computer technology into some sort of battle of the sexes. Oh, it's OK. You can look. Just don't touch. <laughs> 